Okay guys, how you guys doing? So welcome back to another video. Um, so in this case, I'm going to give you some more information on what I have so far on my Ender 3S1 Pro. So we have a couple mods, uh, custom firmware, and um, yeah, general upgrades in this case. So uh, just to give you an explanation in case you're not familiar with the Ender 3S1 series, uh, this Pro model is the high-end version of the Ender 3 lineup. So it features a 220 by 220 by 270 uh, print surface. It is direct drive and it's a pretty small lightweight design for the direct drive and it works very well so far. Uh, this Pro model goes up to 300 degrees Celsius and the bed goes I believe up to 110 degrees Celsius. So with this one you're basically able to print uh, just about anything you want. Uh, it comes with a touch screen, but the touch screen features are limited. Um, but we can fix that and um, get a few more features on there with some custom firmware, which I'll talk here in a second. So um, I'm going to give you some quick uh, information on the firmware that I'm using. So this firmware um, was made by a person named Thomas Toka. I believe this is a fork from the official release. I did not try any official updates for this printer. As soon as I got it, by the next day, I was already looking for custom firmware um, based on what I was looking for and what I was recommended by the community. I stumbled upon this one from Thomas Tokum. The links to the GitHub are going to be in the description down below. Uh, and and also, the, this one, this firmware works on both the S1 Pro and S1 Plus, uh, since they both share the same touchscreen. Not the S1. The S1, if you have just a regular S1, I recommend Mr. Escock's professional firmware. That one's the best for that type of screen. Now, some of the cool changes that are in this firmware is, one, the uh, you are able to see your bed mesh. So you're able to see how off your bed is in certain spots. Uh, so you can adjust manually if required. Now, this one also allows you to do manual leveling. Instead of just the four corners, you can actually level in nine points across the bed, kind of in like an X-shaped pattern, right? Uh, the CR touch, you can also uh, tram the bed using the CR touch as well in the four corners, which makes leveling precise and you do get a PET, PETG and another custom preheat profiles. You also get in the advanced settings um, access to your uh, movement, temperature PIDs, hot and um, offsets as well to disable the sound which currently doesn't work but um, Thomas is aware of that and he's I'm going to fix it in the next release. And also, you do get access to your linear advanced settings as well, which is just one. But makes a huge difference in printing from what I'll show you here in a second. Uh, some of the limitations that I found so far, well, at least with the latest update till today, is that whenever you end a print, it's um, the stepper motors do not disable themselves. Even if you have the uh, disable all stepper motors in the end G-code, so he is aware of that. I think that's something to do with the official firmware, which is forked off. And the auto bit leveling, um, it starts 50 millimeters from the um, start of the, of, the, of the bed, which based on what he said, it's kind of beneficial. So you get a full, a, an actual center square. And I'll let you know more about that one. But because the, the offset on the other end of the bed, um, it, it's also 50 millimeters. So he kind of like made it even both sides and then just the um, from left to right it's, it's the same um, and of course we have the mods that I have on there which is the 1515 blower upgrade the um, design that I decided to go is a high airflow design um, I'll leave the SDL in the description as well but this one that I'm using it actually uh, has a um, airflow in three points you get airflow hitting three parts that the uh, three parts of your uh, whatever it is you're printing so it's pretty good um, cooling effect 
of course, the dual filament holder that's up there. Um, and some cable clips for the wiring to keep everything tight. So quickly going to go ahead and give you an overview of the display and the features you get. Okay, so here's your screen. Um, the home and the print options are pretty much the same. Nothing really changed there. Um, we don't have any type of image preview for your prints yet, but I believe sometime in the future they're going to somehow make that happen and work for this printer, for this uh, screen. Okay, so the printer has homed, and this is the only changes that I've seen so far is in the ready and the settings. So you get the extra profile for, PH for PTG, and you can also set up a custom one. In the leveling section under the device, you get those settings as well from previously. But here is where you're able to visualize the bed mesh. And in the advanced settings, here's where you can tune your movements. Uh, and also the linear advance. Currently set at 0 0.05, which is working pretty much spot on for me. The corners are pretty good. So... Um, you can also have you also have your temperature PIDs, your uh, hot and offsets as well. This is just moves uh, the extruder around from what I've seen, and the setting for turning the sound on and off. But like I mentioned earlier, uh, it doesn't currently work. And the about section, something that is interesting is that the full size of the bed was enabled, so you actually get the full two hundred and thirty five um, millimeters across. On the X and Y, and the same 270 millimeters for the Z. Um, here's the firmware, and here's the screen version. So these are all made by Thomas Toka, so by TT. Okay, and uh, that's really all you get. Um, I want to show you some prints that I've made so far. Okay, so one of the first things I printed, of course, was the famous Benchy, and um, this is how it came out. This was printed at around, I believe, 75 millimeters a second. That's just the info, so take around half of that for the rest. It's not too bad. We do have a lot of line issues there. And I've also printed the uh, calibration cube. This is one of the things that I've noticed, first of all, printing the calibration cube is that corners like the top right there wasn't too happy with that because you get kind of like an elephant's foot top that would be pretty much caused by the seams maybe and then this is the calibration cube after changing the firmware uh, with linear advance enabled this was printed at 150 millimeters a second around 210 degrees celsius on the on the bed and you can see the lines are pretty straight no more of that bulging there there's the top there's the bottom and there's i marked the speed of what i printed it on okay so here's in a different um different element also 150 if you can tell that And then here comes the Benchy. So again, this is the old Benchy. And this is the new Benchy. Okay, so already it just feels a lot smoother. The squareness feels a lot better, looks a lot better. And I did also print some of these from the previous video. These were printed before the upgrade, so that doesn't really count. And here's some of the overhangs with the uh, with the upgraded floor fan. Uh, and this is kind of my mistake because I printed it, I believe, this way, and it was starting here and then going around. So I, this is why we get. I was supposed to print it like this, I believe. But overall, you, you can tell it 
went to the 80 degrees. Pretty much no problem there. I almost forgot this one. So here's an Optimus Primal that we picked up from uh, Printables. The quality came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. This was, however, a 16 and a half hour print. But after this, and this was also printed before the firmware upgrade. And I just felt so comfortable with this printer that this is like probably like just one of the goofiest things I've printed. This is at a 0.1 layer height. Let's just get it to focus. And again, the filament that I'm using is not the best one. All right, so. Okay, so to remove the extruder, we just remove the ribbon cable. And we're going to remove these four screws. It's this one, this one, and these two bottom ones. This one, you leave it. This one is the one you use to kind of center it. So when you're putting on the extruder back, you can line it up with it. Whenever you're taking out the final screw, make sure you hold the extruder so it doesn't fall off or something. Okay. So, here's what I have for the extruder. So, you can tell this, this, um, this is a, like a three, it has like three, uh, I don't know, it just blows air, air to the uh, 3D print in three directions. And this is very lightweight, by the way. This is only like combined like 15 grams. Um, if you're wondering how I did the cable managing for this one. So here's the hot end fan cable. And I just routed it down through there, goes through here, and into there. And it's um, held by some, uh, one of those like fabric tapes. Um, the design is very nice. I really like it. It's super lightweight, like I mentioned. And uh, I'm going to give you a total weight here in a second. But um, if, any, if, if you're wondering what um, type of um, screws you need, um, these are the following types. So you'll need two M3 by eight and two M3 by 20s. You will also need the nuts for them. Uh, the nuts will secure them from this side. And two of them here. And you would have two nuts going there. But in my case, it just printed a little bit too small. But luckily, I was able to just thread them in. So pretty secure. And it's very lightweight. Now let's give you a total weight for this. Okay, so this is not the most accurate scale. But it's going to give you a pretty good idea. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to show you guys. Um, in the next video, I can show you guys how to install the firmware in case you're having any problems with it. It's very easy. If you've seen my other videos regarding the Ender 3 V2 Neo, the, the installation is almost the same takes about maybe five minutes and um, if you guys require it I can show you how I wired up and soldered those uh, connectors to the fans because these connectors are JST um, they're like the 1.25 millimeter ones uh, two pin of course um, you know what I'll show you regardless in, in the next video because I'm gonna upgrade those fans anyways to uh, uh, nicer uh, dual bearing fans which are gonna blow out more air as well so yeah that's all i want to show you guys today if you guys have any uh, questions if you guys have any recommendations for me definitely just let me know i'm always looking to upgrade this printer really any printer that i'm going to own in the future i just want to upgrade them get the best i can uh based on performance as well so definitely let me know if you have any tips for me if i made a mistake in the video definitely let me know so i can also learn um yeah let me know uh, what you think down below have a great day thanks for watching